Welcome back to my channel everyone and thank you for joining me. This is the second video in my origin series which explores several of the haplo groups that exist in my ancestry including my paternal and maternal genetic groups. The series will include a few how-to videos including how to begin researching your family history how to record and source the data you collect and how to pass those early parish records, break down walls and how to publish your family history. These are all videos planned over the coming weeks so if any of the subjects interest you then please keep watch for those upcoming videos. This series of films go live every Monday at 12 noon British Standard Time. Today's video takes a look at my maternal haplo group, a group called K1A1A, which can be traced back to a genetic mutation that occurred 9,000 years ago. This woman lived 367 generations ago, and every person that carries the genetic marker K1A1A descend from this woman. So maternally, she is our Eve, and this group is relatively uncommon too. On 23andMe, it is a genetic marker shared with only one in every 1,400 people. As mentioned already, K1A1A broke away from its parent group 9,000 years ago, and this paternal line stems from a branch of haplo group K called K1A. K1A is a widespread haplo group that traces back to a woman who lived nearly 20,000 years ago, right around the time of the last great peak of the Ice Age. As the Ice Age gradually loosened, its grasp on the global climate an event which took several millennia, waves of migration began to spread across Europe from the Middle East. I'm going to take a brief look at the more distant ancestry of K1A before moving on to more recent times. So please keep watching as there is a few interesting things coming up in this video. Haplo group K is a human mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, haplogroup. It is defined by HVR1 mutations, 16224C and 16311C. It is now known that K is a subclade of U8B. In more simple terms, these haplogroups are the branches of a tree of our human phylogenetic tree. U8B is a dominant much older branch and from that branch stems K1 and K2, two separate subclades that mutated and broke away from U8B. As mentioned previously, haplogroup K is believed to have originated in the middle upper Paleolithic 20,000 years ago. It is the most common subclade of haplogroup U8B. Overall, the mtDNA haplogroup K is found in about 6% of the population of Europe and the Near East. The mtDNA group K is divided into two subclades, K1 and K2, the latter branch being the smallest. K1 is divided again into K1A, K1B and K1DEF. K1A is the parent group of nine subclades and mutations. I have included the U8 phylogenetic tree to give a clear example of what the maternal tree actually looks like. For descendants which include the Near East, European and Ashkenazi Jewish descendants. The following gives examples 
of where K1A appears in history. These are K1A's more famous connections. Analysis of the mtDNA of Otzi, the frozen mummy from 33,000 BCE, found on the Austrian-Italian border, has shown that Otzi belongs to the K1 subclade. Sadly, Otzi's DNA cannot be categorized into any of the modern branches of that subclade, including K1A, K1B, or K1C. The new subclade has provisionally been named K1O, O for Otzi. Otzi is believed to have been murdered due to the discovery of an arrowhead embedded in his left shoulder and various other wounds. A lock of hair at Saint Maximum La Saint Vaughan Basilica, France, which local tradition holds belonged to the biblical figure Mary Magdalene. She has also been assigned to Haplo Group K, ancient DNA sequencing of a capillary bulb bore the K1A1B1A subclade, indicating that she was likely of Therisian maternal origin. Mary Magdalene's mtDNA, K1A1B1A, is a close cousin group to my own K1A1A. Thea, the great grandmother of Tutankhamun, passed haplogroup K to her descendants, including Tutankhamun himself. Haplogroup K has also been observed amongst ancient mummies excavated in a site in Middle Egypt. In regard to more recent times and my own ancestry, I know as far back as my eighth great-grandmother through my direct maternal lineage. Researching your maternal line is one of the more difficult branches to undertake whilst researching your ancestry. All of my maternal ancestors came from either London or its home counties. They include my mother, Christine, who was born in 1957, my grandmother, Joyce Marjorie Plaskett, born in 1934 in Romford, Essex, my great-grandmother, Doris Marjorie Taylor, born in 1904 in Walthamstow, Essex, my two times great-grandmother, Barbara Eliza Walker, born in 1875 in Guildford, Surrey. My three times great-grandmother, Hannah North, born in 1839 in Waltham Abbey, Essex. My four times great-grandmother, Sarah Hubbard, born in 1807 in Woodford, Essex. My fifth great-grandmother, Sarah Geis, born in 1788 in London, England. My six times great-grandmother, Mary Ann Biggs, born in 1753 in Cripplegate, London. My seven times great-grandmother, Sarah Palmer, born in 1722, also in Cripplegate, London. And finally, my eight times great-grandmother, Sarah Osborne, who was born about 1690. Sarah is a brick wall for me, and I suspect she may have come from Norway, as many Norwegians settled in London around this time and my mtDNA matches on 23andMe are for Norwegian families. So for now, Sarah will remain a brick wall until more records for Norway are released online. If you're interested in which European prehistoric cultures include the mtDNA haplogroup K1A1A, then the following will help you build a much bigger idea of the distribution of this subclade. This evidence has been established by taking samples of DNA found in the skeletons of those belonging to that particular culture. Interestingly, they are very much Central Europe. They include the linear pottery culture. The evidence for this was found in Austria in a location called Sletz. The remains were dated to 7,000 48 years before present time and were found in what is now known as 
the Telheim Death Pit. It was discovered in 1983. The pits contained 34 bodies and the evidence pointed towards signs of early organised violence in early Neolithic Europe. The bodies included that of 16 children, 9 adult males, 7 women and 2 adults of unknown sex. The wounds consisted of fractured skulls caused by the sharp edges of adzes and wounds caused by arrows. So this group of people were fleeing when they were killed. The second is the Grosgartic culture. Forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. I'm sure it's Grosgartic. The second is the Grosgartic culture, which dates from the Middle Neolithic in the first half of the 5th millennium BCE. Evidence for this was found in France. Whilst analysing skeletal remains that dated to 6,600 years before present time, the remains were discovered in Rosheim. The third takes us to Hungary and the Kaiatis culture, which was a late Bronze Age culture. The culture was a local group connected to the broader Urnfield culture, which existed between 1300 BCE and 750 BCE. The name comes from the custom of cremating the dead and placing their ashes in urns which were buried in the fields. The urnfield culture was widespread across Europe. Evidence for this came from remains analysed in Hungary and dated to 2858 years before present time. The fourth comes from the bell beaker culture named after the inverted bell beaker drinking vessel used at the very beginning of the european bronze age evidence for this came from skeletal remains analyzed in germany and dated to 4051 before present time so this gives us four prehistoric cultures across europe that's included within their group the mtDNA haplogroup K1A1A. The countries are Hungary, Germany, France and Austria. DNA analysis of remains carrying K1A1A have also been found in Ireland dating back to 5,200 years before present time. So whether my maternal lineage hails from Norway and then across the Baltic seas and back into Europe is certainly possible. Anyway, a big thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have, then please give this video a big thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe, which certainly helps the channel grow and reach a bigger audience. Next week will be our third video in this series and we are going to be taking a look at how to begin researching your family history whether you are a novice or advanced i hope the video helps you get started or helps continue your ancestry research further from yana and i we wish you all well take care speak soon and bye for now. Bye everybody. Bye.